There's no dispute. Hugh Sheridan is one of the nicest people you could ever meet. On screen and in the theatre, he's also one of Australia's finest and most loved actors. So how does anyone make sense of this? In 2020, he became the target of a vile hate campaign that almost broke him. And the reason he was attacked so viciously? Well, Hugh dared to do what actors are paid to do, act. He was offered the role of a lifetime, but by accepting it, he offended a very angry minority group who then made it their mission to brutally cancel him. The lights come on, the show begins. For Hugh Sheridan, there's no better feeling. He knows he was born to entertain. If I couldn't perform, I don't know what I would do because I just love entertaining people and that's all I've ever wanted to do since I was little. Once in a lifetime, it'll catch you by On stage and on screen, Hugh oozes the X Factor. You um, up to anything tonight? Nothing weird or anything, just get to know each other. He's been performing his entire life, but his big break came in 2008, when the then 22-year-old was cast in a lead role in the hit TV series, Packed to the Rafters. Hugh Sheridan. Hugh Sheridan. Hugh Sheridan. The adulation was instant. I love you, Mum. Thanks. Four Logies in five years confirmed Hugh's fame. What did that success feel like? It's funny because you spend your whole life at drama school just hoping to get a job and be doing what we're doing and then as soon as people know who you are, you spend your life with a cap and your head down and you're trying to just to scurry to the shops and live your life. But it was a huge turnaround, but I'm still very, very grateful for the way that it all worked out. Acting is a notoriously ruthless and competitive profession to pursue. For more than a decade, Hugh Sheridan made it look easy. But three years ago, everything changed. At the top of his game, he got the lead part in the Australian production of the Broadway hit Hedwig and the Angry Inch. He thought it would be the role of a lifetime. The truth was, it almost ended his life. I just took a job. <laughs> I, I didn't know that I was hurting anyone. I respect that everyone's entitled to their feelings and uh, I'm very sorry for all of us that it happened. I gave a piece to my the play is a gay love story set in the Cold War era. Hugh was supposed to play Hedwig, who's forced to have a sex change in order to be with his male lover. Well, that was a tough role to get because it's a very coveted role. It's essentially uh, a one-person show. You have to be able to be funny, think on your feet. You have to be able to walk in heels. You have to embody this person that's so conflicted and that's such a beautiful, dynamic character. So here you are training hard. Uh -huh. The role of a lifetime for you and then what? Yeah. My understanding is that they were the producers were already having um, a bit of backlash from various people. Um, Did you have any sense of that? No. Did you I know had, what I, you were getting yourself in? I had no idea. I had zero idea. I'm the new Berlin Wall, baby. Try and tear me down. Talk about being blindsided. From out of nowhere, Hugh was accused of stealing a rare role that should have gone to a transgender actor. Social media went wild with vile threats and within days, thousands of people had signed a petition demanding he be sacked from the play. Hugh was devastated. I had um, a lot of messages saying things like, you know, by taking this role, you're transphobic and all this sort of thing. And that, that really shocked me because I hadn't um, considered that. So are you transphobic? God, no. Absolutely not. Like, that's, yeah, it's so uh, offensive to even feel that people could have said that to me. And to my friends who are transgender, they came into battle for me just as hard. And then a week later, goodbye job. It's attacking an ally, isn't it? I would have thought so, yeah. 
The US creators of the play released a statement saying the character could be played by any actor, but it had no effect. The cancellation of Hugh Sheridan was vicious and unstoppable. The haters won. The play was ultimately abandoned. Do you feel let down by the Australian production that they didn't stand by you? and didn't stand by the production? I feel I feel like it was a huge learning curve for everyone. I'm sure that everyone involved has regrets, but it seemed to me that that was sort of the, the early big cancel in our country. That was a killer that show. That was a great one. Yeah. To go from being so loved to so loathed so quickly crushed Hugh. He was so pushed to the edge, he tried to take his own life twice. Hugh's deep anguish was witnessed by older sister Zoe. To know that your brother was in that much pain, what, what is that like? I was really angry and really hurt and at the time that I just wanted to protect him and put him in a bubble of love because it was, it was very targeted and it was very on purpose. You did try to commit suicide twice, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, it was it was it was it was really dark. Yeah, people always really resonated with me as a human. I think, and that felt like something had changed. And even though it was from a a small group of people, um, isn't there that saying that they're usually the loudest? <laughs> and at that time, that's all I could hear, and I just felt very very sad. Like, I was in total shock. I wasn't thinking. I was just like, get me out of here. But I did not want to put my family through that or I didn't actually want to want to die. The attack on Hugh Sheridan was mean and senseless. He was only doing what actors are supposed to do, act, something he's done and loved all his life. He had a top hat and a bowler hat. At age four, <laughs> you know, he was, yeah. So was that precociousness cute or a bit annoying? No, really cute. He was, oh, yeah. Boy. Despite his enthusiasm, Hugh Sheridan learned early on that not everyone shared his dream. The school that I was at in um, Adelaide, they didn't even like the idea of me being an actor. They called my parents in and sort of said, he needs to just stop all this business with the dancing and the acting. It's just not a career. So were you copying flack then from your peers, the other students, or from the teachers? Oh, from both, yeah. And I do recall uh, the principal actually calling me out uh, in primary school and just telling me that it wasn't normal. And that was sort of in front of everyone. And that was definitely, I think, one of those changing moments because I guess when you're a child, you believe it, you know, when you're that young and, and when it's in front of everyone, you do believe that there must be something wrong. But in the end, I guess... That sort of thing just made me more determined and gave me more of a drive to find where I fit. In many ways, Hugh is still trying to work out where he fits, but in those early days, it seems everyone else already knew. They were convinced he was gay. At that stage, did you think you were gay? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, definitely not. I was very much into Valentine's and had my favourite Valentine. Year after year, <laughs> I thought I was going to marry her. And also, I think definitely other kids knew that. So they knew that I was very much in love with um, this girl. I'm not going to mention her name. I thought you were in love with two girls at the time. Potentially, I was. And I definitely don't want to talk about that on TV. <laughs> um, you've done your research. Mm. Rumours about Hugh's love life, sexuality and identity have followed him throughout his career. Gay, straight, bisexual, non-binary. But he's resisted the pressure to confirm or deny in an attempt to keep his private life out of the public eye. Until now. Had you been consciously silent? Yeah, I definitely. And I thought, well, maybe I should just tell my story. Three years ago, it was the worst of times for Hugh Sheridan. Now, though, he's had an awakening both in his personal life and career. Today, he's fitter than ever and working harder than ever in a job he cherishes. 
So to go out on stage, what do you feel? Well, I love telling other people's stories. I think that's why I love acting. How much do you like telling your own story? I feel very awkward. <laughs> I just, I mean, it's, it's, it's scary. Now, Actors by nature are often experts at hiding who they really are. And Hugh's been no exception. But intense speculation about his personal life has caused him to rethink, to pull back the curtain on the real Hugh. I always enjoyed it when other actors who were past students would come back and tell us about what it's like. Hugh was a student at Sydney's famed acting school NIDA when he first discovered he was not only attracted to women, he also liked men. Back then, though, he was advised to keep it quiet, otherwise his career would suffer. Two teachers took me into an office down there and said that I wasn't allowed to tell anyone and that I would never get any work. And um, both of those teachers were openly gay themselves. But Hugh's sexuality was actually more fluid than everyone thought. Not long after his first male relationship ended, he started dating a woman again. Everyone that knows me knows who I am and uh, knows that I've been with guys and then I've confused them and crossed the roads again, crossed the, tra the train tracks at times. And um, they knew where I was and I thought, well, maybe I should just tell my story. He began by writing it all down, a heartfelt essay explaining the difficulty even he had in labelling himself. That confusion may not have lessened, but it was still a liberating experience. What were you declaring in your essay? What were you saying? What I was declaring was that you don't need to know all the answers. And I said that in there. I said, I still don't know the answers to a lot of things, but that was fine with me. In your writings, you did put a label on yourself. She will. But if you're referring to the other one, I may as well. <laughs> I was too scared to clear that up. I was away at the time I was overseas and uh, I remember waking up to all these headlines saying that I was non-binary. Then I was given pronouns of they, them, which I had never gave to myself. But I, the truth is I identify as he, him, and as human, like I said in the essay, I never said that I was non-binary, but someone else said it, and I just thought I'll let them call me whatever they want. You also said you were bisexual. Why was that important? Um, well, again, it was another label. I said that I liked both men and women, but I felt that it was important to to just be honest in that article and sort of say how I felt because uh, that was true. And there's so many new labels now. And I said in the article, there still doesn't seem to be one that I just go, oh, that sounds like me. And I think one of the things about being a human that makes us uh, special is that we can change our mind. Despite his openness now, Hugh has always believed he has a right to privacy, something that he closely guarded, including his long-term marriage to Raphael de la Fuente. So you were married? No, I was, yeah. For nine years? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's caring. <laughs> but that, again, that was, that was in secret. It's funny because... Um, that story broke when I got engaged to someone else. I don't know, actually. It was on the front page of one of those magazines. And um, a few people said, oh, can you believe they're writing this about you? And I thought, well, that one was true. I mean, out of all the things, I was married. And, I mean, I'd been engaged before that as well. So it, it just didn't seem like something that needed to be talked about. And I never felt like I was lying or being secretive, it just didn't feel to me that it was something that needed to be public. And so, so it was about it's none of your business as opposed yeah, to shame. It wasn't ever to do with shame. And when I was married and also in relationships prior to that with both sexes, it was it often was about them as well and making sure that they had privacy. Not everyone wants to be dragged into the spotlight. Ironically, Hugh's essay, Calling for Equality and Understanding for All People, was published just a week before the controversy of his role in the play Hedwig and the Angry Inch. But the mark of Hugh Sheridan is that he's never been a hater. 
unlike the people who worked so hard to cancel him. Do you think it's ever acceptable to sacrifice someone, to have them cancelled for a bigger political point? There are things that people do that are not acceptable, specifically uh, going out of your way to try and hurt someone or to segregate people or cast people aside. But I think that the, the question that we're talking about goes a lot further in with acting and who's entitled to tell stories. People play Adolf Hitler. People play um, terrorists. People play different characters. That doesn't mean that they are those people, but they have to do it to tell the story. And so it gets into an area where who should be allowed to tell a story? Like if you're not, if you don't have children, can you play a mother? If you haven't lost a child, can you play a mother that loses one? Could you play a widow if you haven't lost your husband? That sort of thing. So I would like to see more transgender people being able to play the genders that they've transitioned to rather than have to play someone that's transgender. I make a vow right here and... Hugh Sheridan believed he had won and was then cruelly denied a once-in-a-lifetime role. He thought he would never again be offered such a demanding part. But he was wrong. He's now appearing in Tick, Tick, Boom, landing a character just as challenging as Hedwig. It's a role that signals not the end, but the beginning of the rest of his brilliant career. Is a tick, tick, boom your silver lining to being cancelled? Oh, look, um, tick, tick, boom is just a joy for me. What I really love about this story is it's about determination and courage to keep going. And I get to tell that story every day, even though it can be tough from time to time, and even though people might try and bring you down from time to time. What a way to spend the day. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.